Beware the stick, a case of a fractured COVID-19 screening swab lost to a patient's distal airways. The COVID-19 pandemic has overwhelmed healthcare systems internationally and required rapid expansion in the remit of existing roles across staff groups. In the United Kingdom, thousands of hospital inpatients are being swabbed for SARS-CoV-2 each day using throat and nose swabs. There is limited guidance on how to approach patients with long-term airway devices. We present the case of an inadvertent complication that occurred following swabbing for SARS-CoV-2 from a tracheostomy site that was successfully received. A 57-year-old female was initially admitted to hospital four months prior with a right temporal infarct complicated by venous sinus thrombosis requiring repeated craniotomies and a ventriculoperitoneal shunt. Supportive management involved a feed and jejunostomy and a tracheostomy from which weaning of oxygen was unsuccessful. Whilst being rehabilitated on the brain injuries unit, she displayed signs and symptoms of a lower respiratory tract infection, an indication for SARS-CoV-2 testing. During swabbing through the tracheostomy tube, the plastic swab stick snapped in half, with the distal end lost into the airway. A noticeable decrease in oxygen saturations and increased respiratory effort were escalated to the on-call emergency team. Further cross-sectional imaging revealed a linear focus of high density within the right lower lobe bronchus, with confirmation of this being the swab stick at flexible bronchoscopy through the tracheostomy tube. As it was not possible to safely retrieve this at the time, she was subsequently transferred to the care of thoracic surgery for further management. The case was complicated by her extensive past medical history, baseline GCS of 6 and anticoagulated state. Following careful assessment of all risks and benefits, the decision was made for the patient to undergo a repeat attempt at awake bronchoscopy following intravenous reversal of warfarin using vitamin K. The surgical team wore full personal protective equipment or PPE as per local trust policy for all aerosol generating procedures. The technique involved flexible bronchoscopy using a large 5.8mm ambuscope with a 2.8mm working port via the existing size 7 tracheostomy tube with its inner tube removed. 20ml of 1% lidocaine was inserted through the bronchoscope to aid comfort. Uncomplicated removal of the foreign object identified in the white lower lobe bronchus was performed using Olympus endojaw disposable biopsy forceps. An opportunistic bronchoalveolar lavage was sent for microscopy, culture and sensitivity and SARS-CoV-2 testing together with the original SNAP swab stick. Post-procedural plane imaging confirmed no new or residual pathology and the patient was successfully transferred back to the care of her neurology team that same day to continue rehabilitation. Overall, this case highlights the need for appropriate training and guidance when swabbing for SARS-CoV-2 through a tracheostomy tube with the current equipment that we have.